the first presidential debate of the 2024 season is coming up this week. And this debate really is a break from tradition in several ways. And I really want to help get you ready and prepared to be able to watch this. And I really want you to appreciate the historical significance of this debate and because we're going to be watching history unfold. And I want you to understand how and why this debate format was set up the way that it was. This upcoming presidential debate is going to be one of the most unique in U.S. history for four reasons, and I'm going to give them to you. Are you ready? Let's do it. Now, the first reason that makes this debate so unique is because of its historical significance. You know, I really want you to appreciate how we're going to be seeing history unfold here. This is the first debate ever between a sitting president and a former president. We have the two oldest candidates that have ever run for the U.S. presidency here in this debate. This is the first electoral rematch between two presidential candidates since 1956, which would have been Eisenhower and Stevenson. And it's also the first rematch between two former presidents from opposite parties since 1892, and that would have been William Harrison and Grover Cleveland. But the second reason why this is going to be such a unique debate is because of the sponsor of the debate. Now, this is also a break from tradition. This is the first debate in 32 years that the Commission for Presidential Debates hasn't sponsored. Now, this is just a bipartisan group that has organized these debates and sponsored them. Uh, they've really acted as a neutral party here, but they're not going to be involved in this case. Uh, they, they have some proposed uh, debates set up uh, in September, mid-September, and two in October, but both campaigns have rejected it. And the, the real problem is because of how things are changing. We have four states that will start early voting in September, and so it doesn't make any sense to have later debates. And having earlier debates will, will certainly allow those voters to be able to look at these candidates. You know, you have to go all the way back to 1960 when the first presidential debates were held between Kennedy and Nixon, but there was no commission on presidential debates. They were hosted by TV networks and reporters asked questions. Most people don't know that between 1964 and 1976, we had no presidential debates. Both L uh, Lyndon Johnson and Nixon both refused to do debates. And of course, it was unfortunate because those other candidates didn't get the exposure that they needed, but they, did, they felt confident they didn't need them, and they, they both won. And it's not until 1976 that you have the League of Women Voters coming along, and they sponsored the Ford-Carter debates. And then you have in 1988, for the very first time, the Commission on Presidential Debates was created, and they sponsored that debate between uh, George Herbert Walker Bush and Michael Dukakis. The third reason why this is such a unique debate is because of the date of the debate. And this is also a break from tradition. We've never had a June debate ever. Now, this is the earliest ever. Most of these debates, like I said earlier, are in September or October. And most people don't really start paying attention to politics and presidential races until after Labor Day. And that's usually when most campaigns really uh, begin to pick up steam. But the big question many people are asking is, why did the Biden campaign push for such an early debate? Of course, Trump was uh, offering to debate him anywhere, anytime. But uh, some people were, were suggesting that the Biden campaign simply wanted to shake up the race, uh, and this would be that opportunity. But also, in recent days, there have been suggestions that if Biden does poorly in this upcoming debate, that would give them time to convince him to step down, give party leaders time to replace Biden with another candidate should he have a poor performance. And whether or not that will really happen or not, I guess we'll see. Here's another question. Who has more to lose in this debate? You know, Biden is pretty much close. Uh, this is still a pretty a close race, even though Trump is up in some battleground state polling right now, uh, and Biden is up in some. Uh, really, if you figure in the margin of error, it's still a very tight race. So why would the Biden campaign want a debate like this? Would they actually have more to lose, or does Trump have more to lose? I'd be interested in, in really knowing what you think about that. But the fourth reason why this is such a 
unique presidential debate is because of the audience of the debate. And this also is a break from tradition. There is no audience. Uh, it's only going to be the two moderators from CNN, Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. Uh, the last presidential debates that we had with no audiences, you have to go back to 1960 between Kennedy and Nixon. And in that, those first two debates, both candidates were in the studio uh, with reporters shooting questions at them. That third debate actually was a virtual debate. Most people don't know that. That was our first virtual presidential debate. So uh, there's no audience. There's going to be two TV commercial breaks uh, during the 90 minutes. There's no opening statements, and it's just going to be simply the moderators shooting questions at them. They have time responses, and of course, they'll have time to refute the other's answer. So both candidates are standing at a podium, 90 minutes. Uh, you know, the Biden campaign suggested that they be seated, and there was pushback from the Trump campaign on that. But, you know, something that most people don't know is there was, there was a big coin toss between uh, both campaigns. And the campaign coin toss allowed them to either choose the podium position or the order in which they would have their closing statement. They'd either go first or they could go second. The Biden campaign won the toss and they simply chose podium position. And so Biden is going to be TV screen right. Um, and you may ask yourself, well, what difference does that make? Uh, which side of the, the, the podium that they take? Well, Experts on stagecraft suggest and say that viewers are inherently drawn to the right side of a TV screen uh, when, when watching. And so the Biden campaign must value this as being important. It kind of shows, and some people suggest, as a, a position of authority. If you take a look at a lot of late night talk show hosts, they're always seated right and their guests are seated left. So the, the Biden team here has valued this podium position over order of closing statements. So they're standing at podiums, 90 minutes, two minute, two TV breaks, and there'll be no interactions with their campaign staff whatsoever. You'll watch the campaign candidates come out to the stage, come out on stage. You'll see them go to their podium and there'll, there'll be a notepad there, an ink pen, and a bottle of water. And notice very carefully, you'll notice that both candidates will probably take and begin writing down on that notepad perhaps some things that they have been told they need to make sure they stress during that debate. And you'll see both of them probably writing and setting some of that stuff aside so they will remind them of what they need to stress or hit during the debate. Another thing that will be happening is that the mics will be muted when they're not speaking. Uh, to prevent interruptions, uh, talking over one another. You know, I can remember back in 2000, uh, Al Gore was caught sighing into the microphone while George uh, W. Bush was speaking. And that really became very annoying. And that happened in that first debate. It didn't happen in the second debate. Uh, and then you have in 2020, the debates between, there was just two debates between Trump and Biden. And in that first debate, there were 76 interruptions. Now, it went both ways between both candidates. The Biden campaign believed that Trump interrupted way more. And so at one point, you can remember this piece where Biden just got fed up with Trump and he said this. Vote and let your senators know how you strongly you feel. Court? Let Vote now. You pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't you're want to a senator. The question. I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, would you answer that because question? Because the you question is, the question Supreme is, Court justice, the radical question, left. Will you who shut is your, up, man? Listen, who, and then in the second debate, they introduced muted mics. And so, most people don't know that. And actually, you know, we had 76 interruptions in that first debate. But when they introduce those muted mics in that second debate, we're told that there were only four interruptions. And so I, I prefer to have each candidate speaking one at a time. I can't stand it when people are talking over one another. And this will kind of be a way to help resolve that. So I have a question for you. Who do you think that the muted mics help more? Do they help one candidate more than the other? I know Biden proposed it. Do you think it just simply helps him better with his concentration? Or do you think it helps Trump more? Does it keep him brief, uh, more disciplined, uh, where he says less? Uh, I guess we'll find out. Pollster Frank Luntz has suggested and he, that he believes that this debate 
will be the most important debate since the JFK-Nixon debates of 1960 in terms of really viewers watching the, the, the responses and the demeanor of, of both candidates. And voters are going to be able to see both candidates, and so they'll be able to contrast both candidates uh, as they're live on stage there. You know, both of these men have served as president. And uh, I agree with Luntz. I think there are two broad general reasons why people will be watching. Yes, people are going to want to hear specifics and issues talked about and solutions, but I think there are two broad general reasons why most people are going to be tuning in. And the first one is, is Joe Biden as feeble as Trump makes him out to be? Are we going to see Biden freeze? Are we going to see memory lapses? Are we going to see him mumbling? Are we going to see him losing his train of thought? Are we going to see some verbal stumbles there? And then I think the other reason that other voters are going to tune in is they're going to see is Trump as unhinged as Biden makes him out to be. Uh, will Trump say things that some people will construe as being crazy? Will he get personal? Will he name call? Uh, I believe this is going to be probably the most watched debate in U.S. history. And that's saying a lot because in 2016, Clinton and Trump set the record with like 80 million viewers. And I think really this debate is going to be watched not only here in the United States, but worldwide. You know, I would like to hear some of your thoughts and comments on what we covered. What do, why do you believe the Biden campaign pushed for such an early debate here in June? And I'd also be interested in what you th think about which candidate ha you believe has more to lose from this first debate. If you like what you watched today and you feel like you got some value, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't checked out our channel and subscribed to our channel, take a second and do that. Do us another favor. Share our channel with your friends and family.